What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and in today's video, it is not my intention to scare you out of joining the army, or going to basic training, or anything like that, but we are going to talk about a sensitive subject for some people, I know it was for me, but relationships in the army. Let's get to it. Alright, what's up guys? I'm here with my good friend Benjamin Broaden. You obviously know him from past videos. And another good friend, Caitlin Spain. I'll probably refer to them as Spain and Broaden because that's usually what I call them. But uh, yeah, in today's video, we're going to be talking about relationships in the army, military, like in general. My phone keeps going off. It's really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Whatever. But um, yeah, guys. So having a relationship in the army is different for everybody across the board. Uh, but you do hear similar stories all the time in basic training. Uh, you're going to hear about Jody, and we'll get into that guy a little later in the video. But uh, personally, we're just going to share stories and just talk about what we've all seen going through training, being in the actual big army, and uh, just stuff like that. So, Broaden, what would you say it's like to like be uh, dating or talking to somebody in today's military? Like, when you... When you join or so yeah so like um a lot of you guys are gonna have relationships already when you join the army so uh, why don't you talk about that so uh, when I went to basic training I was in a pretty good relationship I kind of got lucky um, so my girlfriend she wrote letters to me all throughout basic training and we like called each other almost every day during AIT mm -hmm. and uh, like I never got cheated on. Like it was a really, it was, it was a solid relationship. But by the end of AIT, like the majority of the time we had spent together was long distance, to where we were either sending letters or not being able to see each other's face, obviously. And then I ended up getting stationed overseas. So it was just kind of like. So would you say distance was like a really big factor? Yeah. So it it, it kind of. Kind of got overwhelming because the majority of the time that we were together, we were apart. Mm. So I didn't want to go through another year of that. So we both agreed. It was a mutual thing. Oh, okay, we, so we it didn't it end badly. Like oh, no, no, we're, 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 right, we're still kidding. friends. Nice. Yeah. So Broughton had a good relationship going into the army. I was also in a relationship when I joined or enlisted, and uh, it was pretty solid at first. And um, you know, she'd write me letters and stuff, like saying I miss you. And also, I'm not going to name drop because the story gets pretty ugly <laughs> later on. But uh, long story short, um, I ended up getting cheated on. And the way I found out was like by a stroke of luck, like my best friend from back home had also enlisted like a month before I did. So he was literally like in the, the company right across from mine. So on Sundays, we would like take out the trash and we'd meet up at the dumpster. We'd just catch up. And uh, he showed me a letter that his girlfriend had sent him at the time saying like what uh like my girl was up to and doing it with other people and um i had like i was like honestly i was really mad and uh, i was like i didn't want to believe it at first but that was the same day that we got our phones for the first time and uh so she was the first person i called and i was just like like i didn't say hi i didn't say anything i was like are you cheating on me and she was like super excited to hear me uh, hear my voice and i was like no you don't want like anybody else to hear this like are you cheating on me She's like, no, I'd never do that to you, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was like, stop lying. Like, I've already heard it from my best friend over here and like his girlfriend, like, just be honest. It's like, oh, it was only one time. And I was like, oh my God. That's enough. Yeah, yeah like, one time's <laughs> yeah, one time's more than enough, right? Yeah. And um, like, going, like, hearing that, like her just trying to explain it, I was like, no, I'm done. Like, we're over. Like, don't call me. Don't call, don't talk to my mom, any of that. So like, like we're through and I hung up on her. It took like, it was a 30 second conversation, like in total, pretty much. I called my mom after that. I was like, Hey mom, I love you. Blah, blah, blah. Tell uh, dad and my brother, I love them. All that stuff. And I had two minutes left, like on my five minute phone call. And I just gave my phone back. Cause I didn't care. I didn't give a fuck. I was just so mad and like just frustrated about everything because you know, you don't expect somebody to do that to you. Right. But it happens. And honestly, um, I, I'll blame the distance, but again, that comes down to character. Mm. And, you know, some people will use excuse like, oh, it was so hard not seeing you or, you know, being next to you or like having you there with me. So they were there. But, um, you know, that's, that's an excuse. It, it shouldn't even be like up in the air or whatever. 
and our drill sergeants were like, oh, you guys are gonna earn that phone time now. So they took us out back. You made us put on our IOTV, which is our like plate carrier, you know, like our weighted vest, I guess you could say. And uh, you know, we're gonna go work out. And so they started smoking us. They were like, made us do push-ups, sprints, pull-ups, everything. And uh, honestly, I didn't feel any of it. Like my, it got to the point where I couldn't feel my arms anymore or my legs. And just cause I was so mad, like I was so frustrated. Like they went numb to the point where I could just keep going without feeling the pain of working out. And by the end, like there was literal steam coming off my body from like how hard I pushed myself just cause I was so angry and mad at the whole situation. But um, if you go through something like that, like your friends will be there for you. Like I remember everybody in our company like heard my story and they're like, oh, I'm here for you and stuff like that. And um, they just gave me their support. And like in about two weeks, you know, I was over it, you know, as, as over it as you can be. I guess I, was, I, kept, I kept focus in basic training. I didn't let it like sway me away from the ultimate goal or, you know, like uh, my concentration because I wanted to graduate. I didn't want to let something like that affect me. But uh, yeah, my friend put me back in the right mindset. They got me on track and they really helped me realize that, you know, she wasn't the one. And you know, some of you guys are gonna go through that. I, I'd hate, I hate to say that, but uh, it, it'll probably happen. Like you're gonna meet Jody and uh, pretty much Jody is the dude back home that's trying to steal your girl or guy, you know, I don't- Or well, the chick stealing your dude. Yeah. I don't know what the female version of Jody would be. It's probably Jody's a. It's a unisex. Yeah, yeah, unisex. But yeah, there's gonna be somebody trying to move in on your relationship, and that's why they always make jokes about, oh, Jody stole your girl. The Dear John letters. Yeah, Dear John yeah. letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of those too. Like, I remember a lot of dudes were getting letters from their girlfriends, like, hey, I just can't do this anymore, blah, blah, blah. Same thing for girls. Like, they find out that their mm -hmm. dude cheated on them and stuff like that. And it, it can really destroy people in basic training. I've seen people break down and just quit because they're so heartbroken over that one person. And my advice to you guys is don't let that affect you. Like, yes, it sucks. You guys probably dated for years or months, you know. By the way, love is love and it still hurts whenever you find out something like that. But um, like I said, keep focused. Don't, don't get caught up in that. But uh, that's my story. I had a little worse relationship than Broad did. He was lucky. You know, his girl was faithful and they ended on mutual terms. But uh, Spain is here to share a female perspective on the whole idea of relationships in the military. So Spain, what can you tell the viewers about relationships in the military, whether it be a basic AIT or in the big army? I've got no like comments on like going in with the relationship because I was single going in, but I would say it's not worth going into the army with a relationship unless it's like something you know is serious or you're already married or you really trust the person because distance and time will really takes a toll on someone and you may want to be with the person but they are still home doing everything they're doing with their freedoms while you're not so like mm -hmm. like it's really not like it's harder on you getting the news because that's what you're looking forward to like that's what you rely on your motivation and that's like what you look forward to and think about all the time but they have their life back home so it's easier on your end to stay yeah, it's yeah. easier for you to stay loyal but for them they have all their time to themselves and all their privileges that you don't have like your social media and going out and stuff to find new people and like get with them easy you have to stay faithful while they don't so it's easier just to go in focusing on yourself and bettering yourself in your career Mm -hmm. and having like your family, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your friends, your friends you make in basic and AIT as like your motivation instead. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's very well put. Like you gotta stay focused on yourself. Like, yeah, like honestly, they'll probably be a distraction because half of your mind will be on them and then the other half on training, probably more on them than training. But um, what Spain said is completely true. Like you just gotta, you just gotta focus pretty much. And, um, like uh, as for relationships that you form in the military, uh, there's a lot of those. Like, I mean, you know, you meet some really good people at training and you guys have a connection and you know, you start talking. Like you'll hear it all the time, like in AIT, they're called battle boos. And that's just people that like pair off and you know, like they're pretty much inseparable. Like I remember uh, my friend Campbell, like, you know, like people always thought we were battle boos because we were always together. We really weren't. I mean, we were just really, really good friends. Like we, uh -huh. we were. <laughs> 
Sure. And uh, she know, if she's watching this video, she knows. She'll tell you guys. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, like it was like re a really good friendship. Like we even like thought about getting like contract married and stuff like that. But you know, like we ended up not Don't doing do that. that. Don't do it. Like contract marriages are good if you're in for the money and stuff like that. And but. Don't catch feelings Take for somebody. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, like, know what you're getting exactly. into. But uh, yeah, you're going to meet people in the military and you might form relationships, but just know that um, females in the military are a rare commodity and I don't mean <laughs> it like they're items to be possessed or anything like that. It's just a figure of speech that we use here. Like for every one female, there's like 20 dudes. More. I, more. more. Like she knows. Yeah. And um, like... There's going to be a bunch of dudes <laughs> trying to get at her and, you know, she only has like so much attention to give, you know what I mean? And, you know, sometimes... Only so much you want to give. Yeah, like, she, she knows, like, she gets hit on all the time and, like, she's not looking for that right now. She just wants to focus on herself. But uh, that happens. And same for guys, like, there's going to be girls that hit you up and, you know, you probably are focused on your military career and stuff like that. It's okay to have fun, but honestly, like, my rule is... Like, I, I would personally never date somebody that's in the military with me. And, like, I feel like that's just a rule that I have just because the army is so unpredictable. You can go anywhere and everywhere. And you guys are likely to get separated. And distance does play a big factor. Broaden, do you have something to say? So, I'm, like, in a long-distance relationship right now. Yes. Uh, and But she's a civilian, right? Yeah. Okay. So... Yeah, she's on. She's a civilian, um, and it, it's a little bit different now because with my the relationship I was in when I was going into the military, um, since I was in training, I didn't have a whole lot of freedom to like talk to her, or visit her at all, or any freedom to visit her at all, yeah. really. Um, but now that I'm kind of like in the in the big army, in the real army, um, I have a little bit more freedom to actually go back home and visit her. So it works a little bit better, mm. but. It, like they said earlier, like it, it, there has to be a level of commitment on both ends yeah. for it to work. And uh, like, it, it's going well, I think we've got that. So it, it's just a, uh, what's a good term for it? What can I say about it? It's a good mutual understanding? Unified understanding. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it, it's a uh, combined effort. There you go, yeah. combined effort. But that's good, like they're both willing to put in the effort. Like. Uh, I'd say like back in 2016 before I deployed to Kuwait, I was talking to this really cool girl like honestly like probably one of the coolest girls I've talked to in a while up until that point like after getting out of that bad relationship where I got cheated on and you know she was held down to earth, she was awesome to kick it with, like it was a great vibe all around and um, like I was only down for four days before I was about to like go overseas you know and just start like my first deployment as a private not knowing what to expect and uh you know like we hit it off like those four days i had i had more fun in those four days than i had like on other occasions when i had been down for like two weeks back home and like it was every day was an adventure it was fun we clicked it was awesome but um we both knew i was going away for like nine months and um when i got there like we just kind of like mutually decided that like hey like go live your life like I don't want you to be waiting up for me like you know you still got school and stuff like that and I'm gonna be over here like go have fun go have those experiences make those memories and um, you know we still talk today every now and then like it's good like it didn't end badly and um, but it was, it was it was really good like I felt like I really grew up at that point in terms of relationships and understanding what I want and knowing that you can't hold people back like if you know you're gonna be gone for a while like yeah you can uh, try and put in the effort and it wasn't the fact that we didn't want to put effort in it's just that we both knew that you know it wasn't the right time it was like right person wrong time pretty much I could say but um, it happens and it sucks but you know if you roll with it you know like only time will tell like it just depends but um yeah that's my story on that part of the subject area Spain so I feel like the most part in the army, just appreciate everything for what it is. You don't need to make it into more. Just like, if you like someone, like have fun, but don't try and make more of it than you need to. Because you never know like when you're going to leave or when they're going to leave or when you're going to like be out in the field for like a month and not have be able to see that person or do things. Or if you're talking to someone who's in, like in the army with you, they have stuff going on too. So like have fun, like people, go out, like 
don't not catch feelings. Don't like not do anything. Don't keep yourself in and like hold back from everything. But don't like put too much pressure on things to work out and make things serious when they don't need to be. Because you'll have a lot more fun and you won't get hurt as easily if you just take things for what they are instead of trying to make things into what they're not. That's really good. I think people today kind of rush into those yeah. kind of relationships. Yeah. So you need to focus more on building yourself. Uh, focus more on focus more on becoming the person that you want to be before you start looking for a relationship like that. Um, if you're ready for that level of commitment, you'll know. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like. I'm not gonna lie, like, I've definitely have rushed into certain relationships like in, in the time that I've been in the military career or in my military career just because I thought I was ready, you know, like when I got broken up with, like it had been two years since like I even like wanted to actually try to start talking to somebody again, like like that, you know, putting myself out there. And you know, there was like a few people in between where it was like, oh yeah, you're cool, blah, blah, blah. But nothing like real serious. And um, it's just, like right now, like I, I just got out of a relationship actually, and, and it wasn't bad. It was honestly really, really good. Like I learned a lot and like I actually genuinely cared about this girl. Like it was great. You know, we were actually like, I wouldn't say complete opposites, but um, you know, like some of uh, the things we wanted to do and uh, our personalities were like pretty much opposite ends of the spectrums. But I don't know, just for some reason, like she was just really cool and uh, we vibe. Like we text constantly and everything like that. And uh, you know, we had to end it for reasons that I don't really want to get into right now. But um, it, it didn't end badly is what I'm saying. But in that time when it did end, I was actually a little upset. Um, and uh, I really started focusing on myself and I really started like trying to better myself. That's why I made the goal board that you guys have seen in some videos. And uh, I just started like setting goals for myself that I wanted to achieve, setting like little things that I wanted to get done here and there, uh, making the YouTube channel better, like investing more into it and stuff like that. And it really taught me to give to yourself before you give to others. And mm -hmm. I really like respect her for that. And I'm really happy that we went through what we did, even though it did have to end. But um, it taught me a lot about myself and about how to treat others and like just what to focus on going forward, if that makes sense. And you're gonna have people like that. And those are the ones that are actually really good, when, even if you don't know it at that time. But um, it helped me and I'm sure those of you that are going through that, it'll also help you guys. Just don't be bitter about the situation. Like actually, you know, like look for the good in the bad, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. But uh, speaking of the bad, this is where I'm gonna burst your all's bubble a little bit and talk to you about like stuff that I've seen in the, the army, shit that really the, the, shit, the shit that goes down. Like and this, like so when I started off as a private, going through basic and AIT and stuff like that, like my view on love and relationships was completely shattered. <laughs> like completely. Like you're in training and like you know people have like wives or husbands and kids and like you're seeing them hook up with other people in guys. training like and you're like don't you have a kid and a wife like or a husband and like yeah but we're just having fun like it's a training blah 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 like i've literally seen people actively like cheat on each other on their spouses on their kids and i'm like if this is happening here like this is happening everywhere like no one is safe and you know, like that's an over exaggeration. Like there's some people that are really secure in their relationships and probably don't go through that. But a majority that I saw in basic training and AIT of like the battle booze hooking up and like people that are married with children, like having uh, affairs and stuff, like with people like half their age or double their age, stuff like that. Like it's, it's honestly appalling. Like you think that, um, they're committed in a relationship or you have this view of love and relationships and people are over here just taking a hammer to that shit like they do not care like it's like boom like if you guys watch the walking dead fuck, the, ar the army is negan and he's just bashing these relationships yeah. up like legit but um that happens like do like you're gonna see it i promise you the funny thing is like You'll have a beautiful wife and they'll cheat on him with some ugly little girl who's like half their age, not mature, looks like shit because she's in basic and they're just there because they're desperate. Or you'll have someone who's married 
and they have a handsome husband, and now they're with some little dude who has his head shaved, looks like a little dickhead, and they're still hooking up because they're desperate. <laughs> yeah, like the thirst is real at basic and AIT, sometimes even in the real army, like it's bad. Honestly, like I've, I've seen it, like I've seen it happen. But again, that's like for people that probably have problems in their relationships and stuff like that. And if you have a problem in your relationship, like talk about it. And if you guys aren't on the same page, you know, maybe it's probably best to end it because the distance does kill. The distance does play a factor. It messes with you mentally, physically, emotionally, all that stuff. But I think it's the communication. The lack of communication yeah. is what it really is. Yeah. Because you can, you can make it through the distance. It, it, it's just going through that initial entry training. Like, it sucks because you're communicating by letter. You, yeah. You just you went back in time about it. And writing's not the same. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can't it, say it, what it, you want to say. You can't. Like, writing it. LOL versus sexy LOL is <laughs> completely different. Like, That's true. I actually. No, you, you I did that a few times on accident, actually. <laughs> no, you should have seen some of the letters I wrote. I got really late. Really? Uh, just really sexy about it? No, no, no. Wait, wait. <laughs> Damn, Mr. Rico Suave over here. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so it's been two fortnights since we communicated last. But, yeah, like, honestly, yeah, the communication. Like, if you're willing to make it work, make it work like communicate as much as you can like and again you can only do so much like your partner's gonna have to put in the effort but like don't you know i don't i don't know how to explain it pretty much but you know just try and you know if it's not meant to be it's not meant to be that's just teaching you a lesson down the road and setting you up for something bigger than what you just had no. You can only do yeah. so much to prevent it, but like before you join, talk things out, get on the same page, understand that there's not going to be that communication that you have right now. You're not going to talk every day. Like things aren't going to be the same. If you have problems, work them out. Like get to a point where you're solid in your relationship so that it has a better chance of lasting. Yeah, pretty much. Because if you go in there with problems, time's just, you're just going to overthink everything. Chip That's when the person back home is going to like cheat because they think that. Maybe you're cheating, maybe you don't care anymore, yeah. maybe you don't love them, you're not going to be with them when you get back. Like, things go through everyone's head on both sides, because when you can't talk, that's when you overthink. Yeah, and there's going to be times where you can't talk at all. Like, basic training, no phones. And then uh, when you get to the actual army, like, we've done so many field problems already. Well, we've done a lot of field problems, she's done a few field problems, but still, like... There's times when we're in the field, we can't have our phones. Like we literally just got out of a field problem where it was like 14 days straight with no phone. We've done longer than that, but those days were actually like training intense, like on the go, on the move. And like, we don't really have time to communicate. One, because we can't, we don't have our phones. And two, like our op tempo is so high, like we have to focus on the mission at hand first. And we're not saying that like, you know, it's bigger than you, but we have to prioritize. And like, this is our job. And it's going to happen in, uh, in a good relationship, your partner will understand that. Like I said, the last one I was in, she understood that completely, that she knew I'd be busy. She knew there'd be times where I couldn't text. And I love that. Like, it wasn't like constantly like texting and annoying stuff. Like some psycho girls be like, oh my God, you're not answering me. I'm breaking up with you. That girl I dated in basic training. <laughs> For one, but yeah, yeah, that won't work. That won't work. That's that's a toxic relationship. It's and yes, today's the word thing. of the day is toxic. Make sure you comment that down below, just for the fuck of it, because <laughs> who doesn't love the word toxic? toxic? Britney Spears made a song about it, so fuck yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys. Um, in overview or oversight summary, whatever you want to call it, relationships in the army are not an easy thing. They're never gonna be an easy thing. But if you're two people who are willing to work together to build something and you know just continue to grow that over time, whether distance plays a factor, whether communication plays a factor, like there's people in the military that have been married for years. There's sergeant majors who have wives that are part of the FRG, which is like family, I don't know what it stands for. Family, ready, Fa family readiness group. Dude. Family readiness group. Their wives are like army wives pretty much and they're down for the whole thing. Like they're there with them side by side. Yes, they've had their problems. Like sergeant majors have probably been on lots of deployments, but uh, their wives have stuck with them. And you know, we don't see what goes on behind the scenes, but obviously they're still together. So they work through those issues and they talk through it. Just like you guys are gonna have to do with each other. If you're young in the army and you know, you're 19, 20, Chances are, like, that's not the love of your life. There's some people who are lucky. Be another. Yeah, there's some people who are lucky to find the love of their life at that age, but 
most of the time it's it's not like for sure 100 percent. you know what i mean but it's um, not the end of the world doesn't work out yeah you'll find plenty more people as you yeah, progress and, and that's true AIT and and regular and regular yeah. yeah and you can apply this to inside the army outside the army however you want like relationships are a two-way street for everyone and you gotta you gotta try but I will say the army does add a little extra effect of toughness to a relationship, but that's normal. And like we all said, you gotta work through it. Don't don't rush into it. Don't put too much pressure on it. Mm -hmm. Just have fun with what you're doing. You know, like live in the moment. Live, Let it yeah, be what it is. Live in the moment, and everything that's gonna come to you will come to you. You know what I mean? It's the law of attraction, pretty much. You think good things, bam, like come to you, pretty much, into fruition. But um, I hope you guys liked today's video. I really didn't want to make this one on my own just because I'm one person and I feel like it sound biased if it was just coming from me because I've had a not a real bad run with relations in the army, <laughs> but I've had my share of stories, you know what I mean? And I wanted Spain here for female perspective. That way we can show you guys, uh, female viewers, uh, how it is for uh, like females in the military. Broaden, obviously, because he's had a fair share of good relationships as well and he's very insightful when it comes to things like this. But um, I hope you guys like it. Comment down below who you think gave better advice, Broaden or Spain or myself. But um, also comment down if you're in a relationship right now and how long you guys have been together and if you guys are good to go 100%. But uh, again, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and please share this video if I post it on Facebook and stuff like that. It really helps the channel grow. We hit 200 a week and a half ago. We're at like 240 right now. That's amazing, like we're growing so much, so fast. Let's get this channel out there to help other people who are joining the military and are ready to start their adventures. But again guys, I'll see you on the next one, later.